Sloth Party, a Minecraft podcast, episode 96. We're your hosts, Bearded Sloth. And Little C. Get ready as we embark on epic journeys through lush jungles, uncover hidden treasures in mysterious caves, and unleash our creativity to shape magnificent landscapes. That's right. Today's show includes exploring Minecraft biomes, the past week in Minecraft, listener questions, and of course, Holy Bookworms, Joke of the Week. We are recording this episode live with listener participation via Discord chat. So join the conversation and be part of the Block Party experience. Visit theblockpartymc.com for the ultimate block party adventure. Explore free bedrock add-on packs. Join our amazing Discord community. And find our fun-filled YouTube channel. Don't forget, unlock exclusive perks like the After Hours show and access to all of our past episodes by becoming an official subscriber. If you haven't subscribed to the block party yet, what are you doing? What are you doing with your life? I I mean, that's that's kind of sad. I would be that's crazy living without a block party subscription. I know. How do you, how do you survive? Which by the way, little C, we're going to have to record an after hours show, I think, for for our loyal subscribers. But we don't do anything in our lives to talk about. Oh, well that might be a problem. What do we talk about in the after hours show? There I have a show idea. An hour of silence broken up by bearded sloth or little C randomly saying some nonsense. We'll just say like one word at a time, just random words, and just keep it going. <gasps> there, that's There's an a after hour show. show. That's a there whole show, right? Maybe, there. you never know. All right, little C, how you doing this week? I am okay. Very tired and also kind of sick, so yeah, that's fun. Your voice is a little off, so we apologize, listeners. Luckily, but... luckily it doesn't hurt to talk anymore. Right, so that's good. So you're not suffering through this. Yeah, like I was the past few streams, having to talk and... Right. Ugh. Well, I'm excited to do the show, though. It's an exciting topic. It's very annoying to talk without words working. Words not working. all the time for me, but not being able to use all of my voice. Right, especially as a streamer, which we'll find out later about that whole thing. But this week, we're talking... Exploring Minecraft biomes. We asked the listeners actually five questions this week. Man, you numbered out the questions. Fancy. I know, I'm getting a little fancified. You want me to go ahead and read these since you're a little sick, little C? All right, I'll read the first one and then you read the second one. I read the third one. We go back and forth. Oh man, that might be hard to keep track of, but I'll do my best. I'll hold up the number for you. Which Minecraft biome is your absolute favorite and why? Is it the vibrant cherry grove biomes or the... I just put in big words for little C, so he gets stuck on them. Enigmatic? Enigmatic. The heck does that mean? Anyways, deep dark. dark. Share your thoughts below. What does that even mean? The spooky deep dark. There we go. There's some little C style words. All right. The second question was, have you stumbled upon any hidden treasures or rare resources while exploring these biomes? We'd love to hear about your most exciting discoveries. The third question was, how have these new biomes influenced your gameplay and building style? Are you inspired to create stunning structures or immersive hideaways? Let us know your experiences. Question four, did you face any challenges or unexpected encounters in these biomes? Share your best tips and strategies with fellow adventurers. And last but not least, what are your thoughts on the overall addition of new biomes to Minecraft? Are there any biomes you'd like to see in future updates? We're curious to hear your ideas. Why do you have to use all these big fancy words? You know you do a show with the little C. Well, that one I put in just to throw you off. That was the main reason I kept that word in there. You're a bully. Yeah, sometimes. Somebody's got to bully you, little C. I think you do it enough. All right, we got your responses, listeners, and really appreciate that. Make sure you join our Discord. Gotta be there. Or, of course, you can email us and all that, too. But we love our Discord listeners. First one came from Howlin'. My favorite biome has to be the valleys. It it just gives a peaceful atmosphere. I've definitely stumbled upon treasures all the time, like Heart of the Sea or Shipwreck Treasures. I can't talk either today, Little C. This is going to be a problem. We're only podcasters. Only. The biomes I explore definitely help with building nature-style builds, like how I decorate my nether portals. I also like the style of the temples and how they give me build ideas. I like to build replicas of the desert temples, but out of different materials. I would suggest crafting tables, furnaces, and smokers. 
for desert temples. There you go. I also like the redstone doors of the jungle temples. I don't like stumbling upon dangerous caves in early game because when I die, it is really hard to get my stuff back. Honestly, I think the new update with the new cherry tree biome is kind of useless. I might go there, look around, then leave. The cherry trees planks don't look very nice in my opinion. I like the saplings and flower pots. That's my favorite thing. And the petals. Yeah, that is cool. I yeah. think it does. I agree that the biome just feels off in my opinion compared to other new biomes like the mangrove swamp, which is very, there's a lot of ambience to it when you walk into a mangrove swamp. I think that might just be because it's dense, whereas the forest with the pink petals, the uh, cherry groves aren't as, they're more open. Right. Yeah. Now I do like how he said, uh, the favorite biome for them has to be the valleys just because it gives off that peaceful vibe. I kind of feel that with the cherry biomes also now. Yeah. I like the particles. The particles are nice. nice. Yeah. And give some of that. And I'm right there with you. I love the redstone doors in the jungle temples. I think that's cool. Now I've never built replicas of the desert temples. Now you little see have, and that's no, what I've you mentioned. Replicas. Too. I have just replaced all the blocks in them. Oh, okay. Just build it wherever With it was. Crafting at. tables. Right. Yeah. And that was last season you did that, that on Jericho? Was season three, yeah. Yeah. So and that was fun. You you loved building stuff with crafting tables, it seemed like. You have to. Crafting tables are the meta building block. I do like how you get different loot in the biomes, like he said, exploring and all that. That's really awesome. Minecraft is becoming more of an exploration based game, which I love but we need some sort of inventory management, wearable shocker boxes or something. So I've actually been playing around with some add-ons and one is a backpack mod. Now I haven't had a chance to really get it working yet, so I haven't tested it, but I know they make them out there. Some We need some wearable there, so. shocker boxes. There you go. All right, thank you for that comment, Howlin'. Really appreciate it. Our next comment comes from the number one goon, also known as G-Bow. Favorite biome is the nether. But the deep down dark, deep dark is getting up there as well. You are really <laughs> making this show hard, g -Bow. Yeah, wow. and that's exactly how he wrote it, too. That wasn't me doing that. I'd have to say the reason is mainly that they are difficult, and not many people like to venture into those places. I actually use Elytra in the Nether, which I know is not well used item there, but it's fun to go around all the valleys, fortresses, and bastions. The ancient cities in the deep dark is fun because of the warden. He's such a laid back mob. I mean, it's not like he's killed me once or twice in game or anything. The loot is worth it though, especially now that there are the patterns. It proves you've been there and come back with something only those who have ventured there can receive. I'd like to see the portal in the ancient city become a new dimension. I know that there's a mod that adds the aether. And that might be a cool thing to see. The end also needs an overall in terms of diversity of biomes. Yeah, an overhaul. Yeah, I cannot agree with you there, j -Bow, or the number one goon, that favorite biome is the nether. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it, with another update, it's cool to see the biomes within that. That's kind of nice. But I'm nostalgic. I want to go back to the old nether. I'm liking the ancient cities. I went into one the other day in Jericho and just got obliterated by a warden. <laughs> yeah, the ancient cities, I like the look of them. I like the style. I just walk I'm just into so one terrified. And I'll be crouching the whole time. And I just walk into one and I just end up dying. Yeah, they're so dangerous. Instantaneous death. I did get my stuff back. I'm up to nine deaths on Jericho this season. Now, going through the nether... With an elytra. I know you do that too, right? Oh, I fly around in ancient cities and nether everywhere. Caves. I am so terrified of falling into lava that I, I guess if you get fire protection or you have totems or potions or anything you have totems, like that. totems, nothing scary totems. anymore. Okay. Besides ancient cities, because if you can't replace the totem fast enough. Mm, yeah, that's true. If you have an immense amount of them, but most players don't. Yeah, we're not most players, and even on Jericho, I don't most even have players totems. don't have access to as much stuff as we do because we have these great players. Some are just insane in the amount of items they can 
get and obtain. So we have access to all the blocks, all the things we need, all the totems we need, and they're fairly cheap. Yeah, I have to agree with your statement there. I mean, it's not like he's killed me once or twice in game. Yeah, no, he hasn't killed you once or twice. He's killed you like 90 times on the first day of Jericho. The first day of Jericho, I was over building my starter little hobbit hole. And I just, the chat was full. I don't know if you remember this, BS. Every two seconds, it'd be a chat message. g was obliterated by a warden. g was obliterated I by a warden. I do remember that day. 90 times. The warden is laid back, though. He just wants to be left alone and quiet. I kind of see him as a dad taking a nap on the couch. (laughs) If you make a noise, you die. (laughs) Exactly. You know, so that's how you got to think about it. Yeah, and I feel like sneaking through an ancient city when I'm trying to get to the fridge without waking you up on the couch. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. So you're the warden. (laughs) Yeah, so the warden is fairly laid back. Just be quiet. That's all. All right, thank you for that comment. Really appreciate it. And we still need to take BS to an ancient city. I've been to one. It wasn't, it was raided. I did it. That's okay. I've been to one, so that counts. We are throwing you in an ancient city, just in the middle of one. All right, let's get into our thoughts on biomes, exploring Minecraft biomes. I actually have a soft spot. I really like the Badlands. I just think it's breathtaking when you see the Badlands. It's just amazing. I Otherwise, it used to be known ones. as Mesa Mesa's. Biome. Everyone calls them Mesa. Nobody calls them Badlands. It's just the the unique formations and the vibrant colors and all that. It just, it's captivating, really. I also really like Spruce Forest. It just brings back memories of my childhood, going to, up and visiting like Northern Michigan and stuff. Just something about that. It It's beautiful. To me, Spruce Forest... The not mega tigers, but just spruce forests feel really nostalgic Minecraft to me. Yeah, I guess a lot that might of be my part of it too. old Minecraft memories. I remember being in one of them, and I think it's because they haven't really been updated at all. And I guess planes and stuff haven't, but you have the new villages and ruined portals and stuff. But yeah, you have the villages in there, but in the forest, you just look around and you're like, wow, this just feels like Minecraft. I think too, some of it is. I guess the color palette of it, it's not like super bright, like the cherry blossoms or anything. And it's not too dark, like dark oak forest or anything. It's just that in between, it's kind of neutral. There's just something about it I like. Now with the new additions of, well, I call it new still, but the mangrove swamps and then now truly new, the cherry groves, it just brings a good variety to the landscape too, as you walk around and everything. Neither one of these I really care about that much, but it is nice to see it change throughout the landscape. What, what's that face for? Oh, it, I thought maybe you were mad at me that I didn't like the cherry grove biome. No, I'm just confused on what. I don't know. I think, yeah. No, I agree. Yeah, I'm so confused over here. Just leave me alone. <laughs> That's okay. Am, uh. Now, with that being said, I don't want them to stop. I, I, I want them to keep adding new biomes i really like them just because i don't like the biome itself doesn't mean i don't like them added to the game does that make sense yeah i think they need to focus less on adding new biomes and going back and updating old biomes yeah i think that would be better but it's harder for them to market that yeah i suppose so and how do you get the hype up because that's really what it's about look how long term we've been playing minecraft and still excited for it When they brought in the new cave biomes, that totally changed the way my gameplay has worked now. Totally different. I'm really cautious venturing into caves now. Oh, deep darks. Yeah, in fact, I experienced all my deaths, I think, this season of Jericho in caves. Maybe if you just didn't suck at the game. Oh, that might be part of it. Well, and then to the new cave generation, it's just completely changed the underground experience for me altogether it's just i guess it does add that challenge to it and more to be discovered and everything i just get kind of discouraged by it honestly they're almost too big the caves they look beautiful i love the way they look but i can't do anything with them is how i feel and maybe that's just because i'm not that great of a player when it comes to 
things like that. Clip it. He admitted it. Take that part. Make it your notification sound. Make it your ringtone. Make it what you wake up to in the morning. It's just Bearded Saw saying, I'm not that great of a player. Ha ha. Now, who's the bully now, little Z? Eh, that's just payback. All right. That works for me. Now, recently, in fact, this week, I had the opportunity to experience um, expansive biomes add-on I tried out. I was I'm trying to put it on a friend server and everything. It's fascinating to see the diverse terrains and encounter all these new things they put in flowers and deer and grizzly bears and all kinds of things. Even the mushrooms were growing on the side of trees, things like that. It was kind of cool. I I have also been playing modded a bit myself and just I don't know how Whenever I play a mod pack, there is so much ambience and so much details, and it just is better, and that's what Minecraft needs. And it's not even adding yeah. too much. It's just using what's there, right. but adding better ambience. Now, the one that I've been playing with, in my opinion, it's too much of a change. There are a few. And it There's changes a few things. the total yeah. landscape. There's and... definitely some that I've played, too, like that. Yeah, so... Now, if you could just incorporate a couple of these things, some of these biomes, and just limit what you're adding, not this whole huge add-on, I think it would be better. And I think that's exactly what vanilla Minecraft is doing with these biomes. They're bringing in slow, one by one. We start getting used to it. I think that is the better way to go. And looking forward, I do hope they focus on introducing new biomes. But like you said, enhancing the existing ones, I think that's so important. Making them better, adding additional features, let's say Savannah, like we saw on some of these preview type things. It just would inject all new fresh po possibilities and breathe new life into the biomes we already have. I think that's the way to go. And there's going to be a continuous evolution of biomes at the same time. You look at swamps have changed a bit and they keep changing things here and there. And that's a good thing. Let us see what's your overall th thoughts on this. I love exploring biomes and I feel a lot of them are missing stuff. As I've said with exploring wise, there, I have played modded a lot recently and that just adds so much ambience, so much detail and just makes it feel more fun to walk around and just simply explore and look right. around at the nature of Minecraft without changing it into a whole nother game. Although I have played some on packs that do completely change the game. Even the ones that don't make Minecraft better exploring wise. But you know, that's something I realized when I was playing around with this add on that it forced me to go explore because I want to check out these biomes. I can explore now in vanilla Minecraft and there's still so much beauty in it the but, way it is now. But to me, there's really not because I've just seen it all and it's just so much exploring. Now, I do like in vanilla, I like the dark oak forest because I think it's kind of a hard early game biome. It's dark. I agree. It's Mobs can very, spawn. it's pretty ambient when you walk through it, especially if you are just having the sounds on. You, you know, you make it dark in your room to make it scarier and just really immerse yourself into the game there. And if you're walking through a dark oak forest and stuff, early game, it's amazing. And you can stumble upon a woodland mansion or and it's just really cool. Yeah, I love the different biomes. I'm so happy we covered this. Biomes are what makes Minecraft playable, though, is the change. If it was all one biome all the time, it'd be so boring. You look back at the very, very early minecraft just it was random just blocks grass, right there was some fun to that but it wouldn't be long-term fun you get bored really fast i like too that they've changed biomes from vertically and not just horizontally so down in the caves up in the mountains they change up and down in the nether same thing i do like that too it keeps that variety going all right that sums up our topic of the week now the past week in Minecraft, all info from Minecraft.net. All right, we've got a couple of them this week. We've got Minecraft Java 1.20.1, and this was an official release. Did you get this one, Little C? Um, I haven't been, I've been playing modded, so I'm still on 1.19.2. Oh, okay. It, this one came out Monday, June 12th, 2023. They fixed bugs in this version. 
fix to crash related to disk permissions. Addressed an issue where the Realms invitation icon on the Realms button in the main menu was displayed incorrectly. Fixed a rendering problem with buttons in the Add Realm interface within the Realms menu. Resolved a soft lock that occurred when canceling the process of joining the server. Fixed an incorrect call to protochunk set status during chunk generation. All right, that's all there was in there. So basically bug fixes is all it was. Next came Minecraft Bedrock Beta and Preview 1.20.10.23. I feel like we missed 22 somewhere. I think they missed it, honestly. This one came out Wednesday, June 14th, 2023. Experimental features, and I did summarize all of these change logs to make it a little bit more listenable, I guess is what you'd say. So that's mainly for you, Little C. Yay. They have recipe unlocking. The notification informing about new recipe variations has been removed as it was not helpful. Spectator mode no longer unlocks recipes. Unlocking a new recipe no longer changes the inventory toggle option to all, ensuring it remains as you left it. So all of that, they're playing with it. I know the other beta preview we talked about before, they were they brought that in. They're trying to make it like Java edition, so it's per world and everything. They're just tweaking it, trying to figure out, getting feedback and everything like that. They have some sneak and crawl things. Again, this is still under experimental. Players no longer automatically sneak while on ladders. Fixed a bug causing players to get stuck at the top of a ladder when sneaking. Crawling head rotation no longer follows camera rotation directly. Swift sneak now correctly increases crawling speed. So what do you think about this? Should swift sneak increase your crawling speed? A hundred percent. Okay. I think so. What about you? I go back and forth. I think if you're crawling, you're going to go slow. I know if I crawl in real life, it takes me a long time to get anywhere. What about when you crouch? I can probably crouch a little better. I think we need a video of this. I might have to do this. Bearded Sloth video coming soon, maybe. Legacy crawling works properly with the sneak and crawl toggle turned off. Mobs now have the correct collision box when spawning. Short sneaking is now available during normal gameplay. Crawling animation no longer triggers while gliding below blocks. Players can be forced into sneak crawl state while flying. All right, now the features and bug fixes, non-experimental. General things here, player keeps now properly flap when moving forward, but looking sideways. So they weren't flapping if you were looking at the camera basically from the side, essentially. Reduced instances of unable to connect errors due to expired auth from discovery. Have you ever had that problem on Bedrock? I don't think I've had it. I've seen people Not, having it. I've seen people have it, but I, I haven't. I think it's more of an internet thing. Okay. Fix unresponsive or a laggy input when using mouse together with a controller. Mouse input things here. Improved handling of simultaneous mouse clicks triggering individual associated actions responses. I have some accessibility things here. Text-to-speech narrator now says slash button when hovering over the slash button in the chat screen. Default chat duration set to 10 seconds, while default toast notification duration remains at three seconds. I don't remember if that's more or less. Do you happen to know, Little C? When the pop-ups come up, how long they used to stay? I have no idea. I really, I don't count when they pop up. Yeah, either way, that's just the default. You can actually change that for however long you want. Text-to-speech narrator now reads item names when selecting items in the hotbar. Some changes with actors. Fixed issue preventing switching mounts without manual dismounting. So now you can ride one horse and then hop on another horse and then in a boat and then on to pig with saddle. I think that's what that's talking about. Maybe we can do races with just going from mount to mount. Oh, my. How would you get the animals to stay put? I guess I don't want to trap them or something. Or something. Yeah, I don't I, know. I, I think we can make a game out of this. Hmm. Block changes here. Pumpkin, carved pumpkin, and lit pumpkin. Now accept the Minecraft Cardinal Direction State string during a world update. Mushrooms can now spawn on fallen tree trunks. This is a good thing. I like this. This is kind of going with that ambience and just immersiveness. 
So the mushrooms now can spawn on those tree trunks. What do you think about that little thing? It's really cool. I think that's actually good. Now they just need to grow on the sides. I think it was in the game before. Yeah. And I think it was a bug that they weren't. It, they weren't. And they, they haven't dropped. been for a long time now. I know that. Conduit has correct lighting when placed on the ground. Gameplay changes. Removed recipe for crafting barrels with sticks. Entities no longer freeze without powdered snow if there is a powdered snow block nearby. Chiseled bookshelf. Correct sound effect played when removing an enchanted book from chiseled bookshelf. Chiseled bookshelf slot interactions are now symmetrical. Have you played the, with these yet in game? A little bit. Not a lot, though. I haven't either. I really need to. I have some great ideas for these. Boat Boats retain the ability to carry passengers when upgraded to trails and tails. Oh, so that problem where you lost all your charged creepers you had trapped in boats that escaped. When you updated, well, they fixed that problem now. I yeah, think it's now a that, little too late now. Now that all your touch creepers are now walking around your house. Yeah, exactly. Fixed issue where affected boats couldn't carry passengers. User interface. Cursor no longer snaps to a random inventory slot using a controller. I definitely always had that problem. Horse, yeah, me too. Yep. Horse and donkey jump bar, as well as camel dash bar, now scale properly with the experience bar. Commands slash time query command now returns the correct day and time of day when the absolute time is negative. I don't get how the time can be negative, but okay. Magic. Had some technical updates here. Fixed crash caused by invalid entries and allow list for dedicated servers. Fixed player capes not flapping correctly when moving forward, but looking sideways. Observer blocks now use the correct state. Minecraft facing direction. Custom entities can now override any vanilla entities, including camel and sniffer. Various, various, jeez, I really can't talk. Either one of us can talk today. Various item components, such as Minecraft shooter and Minecraft throwable, are now out of experimental status in JSON formats 1.20.10 and higher. How dare Minecraft have Minecraft shooter? That's what I'm thinking. I know that's a whole controversy. And everything. Yeah, that's a whole controversy going around right now. The editor is in early development, available for keyboard slash mouse on Windows PC, Bedrock preview builds with bug fixes and improvements. A few experimental, te experimental technical updates. Dynamic property identifiers are now limited to 1,024 characters. Various APIs and functionalities have been moved to stable version 1.3.0, including teleportation options, world events, entity components, spawn point updates, scoreboard functions, raycasting changes, validation checks, and enum value updates. Changes and improvements were made to cameras, items, and charging behavior. I just summed that into basically three lines. That was probably about four pages of changes. That nobody understood. On the experimental technical stuff. Yep. So I know it was boring for y'all, but that was heavily, heavily condensed. All right. Those are all the change logs I have for this week, Little C. Anything else you know of been going on in the past week as far as Mojang's concerned? Not that I can think of. All right. Now it's time for what we've been up to in the past week. I have been very busy in the past week as a church. We had our vacation Bible school slash day camp thing, and I was doing all the tech stuff there. Along with a few days, I was taking pictures, so that was fun. It has made me very tired, but it's fun to help. And all the tech stuff, my goodness, that I had to do throughout the week was crazy. Yeah, and you called me and texted me a couple times this week. How do I do this on the soundboard? How do I do that on the soundboard? Why is this not working? You did great, though. It, yeah, it went all right. And along with that, I have been streaming every day, which has been kind of hard for the past two days or, yeah, two days because I've been kind of sick. I thought you were going to miss it last with night. With a sore throat. And then last night I streamed kind of late. I streamed like, like 9, 30, 10 ish. But so it's hard to stream when you have a sore throat and it hurts to talk. Right. Yep. But still did. So daily stream over 20 now. I think 23 or 24. That's awesome. That's Great. And are you gaining, what are they called over there, followers? or? Yeah, I'm gaining followers and subs, which are like the paid thing. And then right. also, That's awesome. just average viewers. 
Yeah, that's sweet. It's awesome to grow your channel. Now I'm just waiting for my voice to come back. But for now, I guess there won't be any Mickey Mouse impressions on the show. Oh, no, that's not good at all. All right. Well, I've been doing, I bet you can't guess here a little, see. I've been trucking all week. No way. Yep. And I'm actually been trying to come up with another idea for another bonus show, kind of like the Noob Corner. We have enough bonus shows. I Calm like down. giving content. It's fun. It's fun to do. So I've been kind of working on an idea I don't want to flood there. the Spotify page with so many different things, though. Yeah, there is some truth to that, I suppose. I do mark them as bonus, though. I did play a bit, like I talked about earlier, um, trying out some other add-ons for that friend server. They're actually restarting a world next week and wanted a bunch of these add-ons. I don't think they quite understand exactly how add-ons work, so you can't get everything in there, but I'm doing my best to help them out with that. I did spend some time then taking their add-ons they wanted to try. I put it on our testing server, tried it out. That's where I walked around some of the different biomes and everything, but I kept getting killed, little Z, by yetis and grizzly bears. Just an average day in Canada. Yeah, and it was really cool to see the different game generation and everything and i spawned i was in my favorite the spruce biome type of forest but the trees were different they were like custom trees and everything yeah modded stuff is really cool with that and when yeah. you look around you just see how like much ambience there is and stuff and that's what minecraft needs yeah it was fun but it's not something i think i want to do all the time playing that way not myself anyways i know a lot of people like it then as far as real life like you mentioned last night which would be Friday night, actually had the kids program for the end of this VBS and day camp stuff. And so I helped do the soundboard help there because you had some video stuff to do there. And we got that. So it was awesome to see the kiddos doing their program. We were able to get the stage actually mic'd properly, which thank you for your help on that. That would have been impossible if we didn't. A few weeks ago, we had to fix like major thing. Right. And I've been spending tons and tons of time learning about audio and that particular mixing board they have at our church and just learning all there is to learn about that stuff. And that's how I figured out how to mic it properly. I basically mic'd it so no matter where they were on the stage, we could hear them. Even even the quieter ones. You know how kids yeah. are. But we really heard the loud ones, that's for sure. That's for sure. Hi, Mom! Yeah. You know, and it's adorable. It's fine, especially the young, young kids. I am hoping next week maybe I can get some time and not help all these other servers out a little bit, you know, get that finalized, and maybe I can just play Minecraft. No, you can't. You're not allowed to play Minecraft anymore. I know. I enjoy doing all this other stuff, like working with the other servers, the add-on packs, all that kind of stuff. But there is something about just chilling out with just playing Minecraft. I'm hoping to do that in Jericho, of course. It's just so fun. That's pretty much sums up my week. And now we're doing the podcast. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Oh, I did order a desk for the studio. Oh, no. So we have another desk. So we will have proper placement for Little C and Holy Bookworm. Even though we don't have the space to put the two desks that are in here anywhere else. So now we just have two desks laying on top of each other for no reason. So this will be fun to figure out where we're going to put these. That won't be an issue, Little C. Don't worry. I'm good at rearranging. My mom taught me well. She rearranges the house basically every week. And I had to move furniture around all the time. So I'm used to it. As long as you don't start dumping your junk in my office, I'll be fine. Oh, that's where it's all going. And yes, our live chat here is chiming in. Thank you, Annie May. She put, ooh, nice, Jenga office. Yes, exactly. It really is. We have lots of so much games stuff. around here from our other business. And then we have all the studio equipment. But I'm actually thinking that this desk is going to make more room in here. I think we just need less stuff first. Well, that might be, but I can't wait for that. That's not how my brain works. Patience. All right, that sums this up. Now it's time for a do 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 Listener question. Just one. You guys are slacking listeners. We need your listener questions. But Come anyways. On. Question us. We're thankful to get this one. It's from Holy Bookworm. 
Would you rather never be able to play Minecraft again or never eat Mexican food, including my tacos, ever again? Okay, holy bookworm. Really? Really? You're going to give us this dilemma? Are you trying to crush my soul and turn my taste buds against me? This is a choice between eternal Minecraft deprivation and a life devoid of mouth-watering bliss of Mexican food. Stop everything, little C. We have a crisis on our hands. Stop your live streaming and start working on a taco item texture for Minecraft immediately. Our taste buds are depending on it. We're going to prepare to embark on a culinary adventure like no other where pixelated tacos bring both sustenance and joy. Minecraft and Mexican food shall forever be entwined in harmony. Okay, crisis averted. Whew. Did so I have which to one choose? are you picking? <laughs> I made it so we can have both. Okay, well, instead of avoiding the question like BS, I'll actually just answer it like a normal person. And I would probably pick Mexican food. As I might not always play Minecraft in my life when I get older or whatever. And it might not always be like a thing that keeps getting updated. I hope it is. But if I had to pick, I'd probably, I mean, I'll probably always be eating tacos in my life. And I feel even later on in life. I think I'd regret not being able to eat Mexican food over just not being able to play Minecraft. Mm, I don't know. And uh, I, can do I, other I, things. I couldn't answer it. My I brain could, could other not things function properly there are and try to answer of that. other things I can do in the world other than play Minecraft. No, I'd Minecraft okay with is it. life. Minecraft There's plenty of other life. video games I can play too. All right. Thank you for that listener question there. Holy book where am I guess? We I need guess. your listener questions, and don't make them so mean like that. That's just that's just mean. It's oh, bullying. He's, I know. Beard is also gonna go and cry in a corner for an hour. Aww. Now it's time for everyone's favorite part of the show, and the reason you've listened this far. Holy bookworms, joke of the week. What do you call a lazy kangaroo? A pouch potato. <laughs> Did you like that one, Little C? Yeah. There's a lot of animals you could use for that. I think koalas have pouches. Yeah. I think. That was pretty good, though. There's a lot of Australian animals that have pouches. If you haven't huh. heard, too, Holy Bookworm's doing her own show now. It releases Thursdays at noon Eastern time. But warning, there is a pun of the week. Yeah. It's not just the joke of the week. It's a pun of the week. And it's quite punny. Before we log off, it's time to gather our Minecraft friends and extend the invitation to your fellow players. Join us in spreading the block party buzz by sharing our lively Discord community, exploring our fun-filled YouTube channel, downloading our free Bedrock add-on packs, and unlocking exclusive content as a subscriber at theblockpartymc.com. Together, let's make this party even bigger. We want to hear from you. We love your comments and questions. You can email us at contact at theblockpartymc.com or leave us a voicemail or text us at 1-260-222-7240. Thank you for being here. We truly appreciate it. Make sure to tell everyone about the Block Party and Minecraft podcast. I'm Bearded Sloth, and now I gotta eat my coffee. And I'm Little C, and I'm gonna go eat a taco. <laughs> <laughs>